Hey guys, this is Christian from the Architect channel, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a 3D perspective section inside of Revit. So the first thing you need to do is find a good floor plan view to cut into. And for this project, I'm just using the level one view and it should do just fine. And then secondly, you're going to find the area that you want to cut into. So for this project, I'm going to be cutting into this right section of the building. And if you're following along, you don't need to highlight that. I just wanted to show you what I was planning to do with this project. So the first actual step, we're going to go into the view tab and surprisingly, we're not going to hit section. We're going to go to the left of that and under 3D view, we're going to hit the camera view. So this camera view is unique because it offers a 3D render rather than a 2D render of the normal section. But I don't really like the camera view that much because you can't really hold shift or control to align the camera to any of the axes. So something that I personally like to do is since I'm cutting from, uh, what is it, east to west? Never eat shredded wheat. Yeah, east to west. I'm going to be using some of these uh, grid slash guidelines to kind of reference to. So the camera's not going to grip to it or anything, but it's just a little something so I know that the view is perfectly head on because you know, I'm a perfectionist. Aren't we all? But as you can see, it created a nice image for us, but the image isn't really showing much, wouldn't you say? We're staring at a wall and a few windows, so we're going to go back into level one and adjust this view accordingly. So we can move it back. We can also move um, the view or the end of view site uh, back as well. But you may notice that it's kind of getting cut off near the edges. If this happens to you, you can go down to the bottom of the screen and hit do not crop view. You can also do the same exact thing by checking or unchecking the crop view marker over here. There are many ways to do the same exact thing in Revit as you may already know. So I'm going to be trying to show you a few of those along the way. But now that we have that unchecked, our, um, our camera kind of disappeared. <laughs> so to find that again, we can go back to 3D view and select the camera border and go back in. Or we can also go into this 3D view that we just created, right click that and hit show camera. Once again, many ways to do the exact same thing. But since we want to cut into this section of the building, we want to make sure that this diagonal line from the camera is not cutting into that. And we want to leave just a little wiggle room on the outside and try to get it as symmetric as possible. And after you do that, you can go back into the 3D view and there you have your actual building. And it's a pretty nice picture, but we're still not exactly cutting into anything. So to accomplish that, we're going to hit the section box. If it doesn't uh, load right away, you can hit apply down here. And then we're going to select that and go back into our floor plan. Now you'll see the section box. This is what's actually going to cut into our camera view. So we truly have that section. And uh oh, my finger slipped and the section's gone. So, uh, like earlier, we can hit 3D view and hit show section box. Just wanted to show you that because that happens to me quite often. But you can move this inside of your building. Uh, this is actually a previous section, like a normal section that I had earlier. And I kind of just want to align it to the same exact section. So, there's some consistency in my plans. But you can move it anywhere you want anywhere that has a good view really. So now that we go into the 3D view, we can see that we're actually cutting into our uh, building now, which is kind of essential for a 3D section, wouldn't you say? But sometimes it won't look this nice right away. Um, sometimes your end of the section box will also be inside of the building. And so you won't truly be cutting inside of the building. So we're going to be needing to move this outside of the building to make sure that we're showing everything of importance. And sometimes if you have trees or houses in the background for like context, um, that won't be showing as well. So we can move this way out and hopefully that will start, yeah, that'll start showing the trees and context in the background as well. So after we do that, I think we're finally done with the floor plan. We can exit that out and we're done with this section box as well. So I don't really like it intruding on my beautiful masterpiece right here. So I'm going to right click that, hide in view and hit elements. You can also do hide in view category, but there's only one, so it doesn't really matter right now. But we have a nice looking view right now. 
However, um, there's a few things we can do to add a little more detail, a little more polish, and I'm going to go over with, uh, that with you right now. So the first thing I don't like about this is we're showing a lot of ground right now. And considering we don't have much of a basement, I don't think we need to show this much. So I'm just going to move it up a little more. Now we can double click to center and we have a nice looking like postcard kind of view. And but right now it's all just black and white, lack of color. And I'm not saying you need color, but I think we can add a little bit of color to spaz it up. So we can hit VG or visibility graphics. You can also uh, go to view up here, visibility graphics up here as well. And I'm going to select everything and add a cut pattern. So I can override elements and foreground, background, doesn't really matter. Um, but you're going to hit solid fill and then select any color you want. Um, I normally do black or uh, I've been using this dark gray a lot. Uh, you can hit okay, okay once again and apply and you'll see whoa did i hit the wrong thing i think i may have hit the wrong button but now that allows me to do it twice with you <laughs> so okay okay apply okay all right i don't know what i did the first time but now you can see that it's highlighting everything that we cut into and i think this can Add a little more detail, um, add a little more perspective so you know exactly what you're looking at. And I think it helps. Um, I don't really like how it uh, also uh, colored the ground over here. So I think I might remove that if I select it and go up here. You can see that it's under the topography layer. So VG again. And this time I'm going to type topo, top, maybe topog. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's better. Hit all and I'm going to be removing this override that I just created. So now that you can see it's nice and clean at the bottom again. So after that, um, we have a little color to show where the sections cut. We have an actual section cut inside of the building. Uh, I think we can add a few shadows to make this really polished. So we can go down here into the visual styles and hit graphic display options. Under that we can hit shadows and show ambient shadows and that's just a nice little touch it adds a little depth inside of the building i think uh, i'm going to show you it with um i'll show you it off again show you it on again and i think it's a nice little touch you can also add even more shadows by hitting cast shadows but sometimes this can be a little overwhelming as you can see um, but you can alter the um not effect but how strong it is by going under lighting over here and maybe let's do this half half of 50 is 25 and I don't think that's as bad anymore once again off and on so that's not too bad at all that's not too bad at all and I think that's everything that I wanted to accomplish uh, sometimes if you have larger buildings um, you might not have a very good perspective view right from the start. So you can edit this eye elevation and target elevation as well. So if I wanted to be starting off higher from the ground, I can hit 5,000 or something. And I am much higher from the ground. However, I'm still looking at that lower elevation from earlier. So for the best effect, for the best head-on view effect, you're going to want to match these. And now you can see... That if you have a much higher building with a lot more floors, this will center it. But for this project, I think a lower view should do. So if I go into one of these elevations, I kind of like to line it up uh, in between the floors. And that elevation is 3,000. So I'm going to go back and do this view and make both of these 3,000. If I can type, hopefully. Ooh, 30,000, that would be good. But there we go. I think that offers uh, a very nice perspective. However, I think we need a little more ground than that. Earlier I said it was too much, and now we're getting too little. Oh, the irony. Um, sorry, perfectionist within me. <laughs> Gotta make it perfect. And I might lower the sky as well, so we have a nice, even ratio. So, that's our uh, 3D perspective. Um, you can always add a little more you can always do a little less it's all your design so it's whatever you want it to look like if this helped at all remember to leave a like and if you want to see more revit tips like this remember to subscribe
Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good night. All right, bye-bye.